Hey there, welcome to The Human and Machine, where we simplify everything Web3. Today we're going to be talking about how blockchain is being used behind a new trend called marketing for good. Stay tuned. So today we have with us Jason Sibley, CEO of Clio. How are you doing, Jason? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm good too. You know, really excited to learn more about what you guys are doing because we talk to a lot of gaming projects, metaverse projects. And every once in a while, we just need something different, right? Happening in the Web3 space, you know, something where people are doing it for a good cause. Yeah, and we're, we're excited to tell our story now. So thank you very much for inviting us on. Absolutely. So before we jump into Clio and the nitty gritty, let's first start with you. Can you tell us about yourself and, you know, how did you get into this whole Web3 space? So I'm a um, longtime marketer, um, but I've been incredibly lucky. Uh, so my first job in marketing was actually what I would class as the, as the birth of modern day affordable computing. So I started working for what was pretty much the only outlet for computers in the UK uh, back in 1990 at the, uh, where we started, you know, the product was called the 486 uh, SX, which would probably mean absolutely nothing to any of your listeners. Um, you know, but we had like Doom and stuff like that, but it was, you know, the birth of, of Word and all that kind of stuff, right? So, you know, my, my first job in marketing was really bringing to market affordable computing solutions for the home. Um, around 12 years later, um, in 20, 2002, I actually branched off to launch my own agency. So for the last 21 years, We've been trying to help all sorts of blue chip clients uh, from technology to consumer electrics to into finance, uh, bring products to market and generate pipeline. Uh, and today we've got, you know, some amazing people, some amazing clients and offices in the UK, uh, US and Asia. Um, the one thing that's very um, uh, common about all of that was we kind of launched the agency with the birth of Internet marketing. You know, so we were talking about why you should have a website, for example. And all of that is what you'd call today with like the transition from web one to web two. It, what's incredibly exciting for me is the next 20 years is going to be dominated by web three. So around nine, around 2017, um, we started to work with our first blockchain clients as an agency. Um, uh, we supported a few ICOs, uh, which was an incredible time back in 2017. Uh, and we've still got some customers and agency today, probably our most recognizable a uh, customer in that space is uh, Binance. Um, but again, we're delivering web to demand generation solutions into the web three market. So my kind of history up to this project has been working with projects, helping projects launch, um, but always looking for that opportunity to apply the technology to a market that I've basically spent the last, you know, 30 years working within. Got it. Okay. So... Yeah, I mean, that's a long and very rich history coming from <laughs> Web 1 to 2. And then now you're at the forefront of Web 3. Yeah, I mean, so, I, I, yeah, yeah. I, you, know, you know, I kind of tell customers it's, it's Web 5 now, um, which is Web 2 plus Web 3, which makes it sound good, right? Maybe that's because um, uh, I'm a marketeer. But it's, it's just been, I've just been so lucky, you know, with my timings. And we've seen, you know, the advent of so many different things in, that, in, in those years, you know, from you should have an internet, you know, convincing people why the internet was good, you know, to why they should have, you know, email marketing and an email marketing system to why they should do search engine marketing to then why they should have a social media account, you know, and I remember trying to convince people that, you know, Twitter was going to be a thing. And then literally this morning, I got my congratulations, this is your 14 year anniversary of your Twitter account this morning. And it kind of puts into context the journey we've been on also puts into context how old I am and you never quite feel your age, but also, um, you know, it's important to realize that, that these web two platforms are that old, you know, like Facebook's 20 years old, you know, tw Twitter, they're all that old now. So, you know, we're about time. It's about time for the next, you know, evolution and this, you know, this new layer, you know, not to labor a point, but, you know, I, we've really seen communications evolve dramatically in my time. Right. Especially in marketing, you know, so so, you know, for me, Web 2 was about an innovation in the speed of communicating and what you could communicate and how you could communicate. Being able to add this transactional layer on top, you know, I could never imagine what we were doing today, 20 years ago when we started the agency. Like just like I probably can't imagine 
what blockchain and Web3 will do for companies in, in 20 years time. Right. So it's it's the most exciting place um, uh, to be at the moment. So if people are watching this and they're in a project or, you know, congratulations, this is it's frustrating and they always are, you know, but this is the this is the place to be. You know, and we're going to ride this wave for at least the next 20 years, which is going to be an incredible time, I think, for everybody. I know I'm heavily biased, but that's exactly why we <laughs> invite people like you on this show <laughs> to share the passion. Yeah, Great. So that's interesting. You know, like uh, marketing is not exactly a, a big topic we talk about in Web3 all the time because it's dominated by like NFTs, right? All of that. But like, for example, decentralized social media communication, this has been brought up. But can you kind of now get into, you know, what is Clio? And how did it eventually get into Web3? And I guess, you know, why does it need blockchain Web3? Yeah, and actually we didn't start off with this, with the idea of trying to find a blockchain project or trying to find a Web3 project. We started from really what's the single biggest problem in marketing today. And that's the value exchange required at point of contact request. So what I mean by that is, you know, we, um, you know, we can warm people up and we can do some nice well-placed ads and we can do some targeted awareness. And we, you know, a lot of our clients today are doing ABM campaigns and things like that. But at some point, we have to ask you for your email address and your permission to contact you. That's just how it works. We cannot sell something to you unless we get your details. So that's the single biggest pinch point in marketing today. Um, a lot of people approach that pinch point by creating what I'd say is dumbed down content. Now, what I don't mean is like irrelevant content that's stupid, but it's content that will talk to the masses like an idiot's guide to something or a future perspective piece on your industry. The, the problem with that is that you just fill your pipeline with lots of people with a very low propensity to buy something. So when those leads get passed to sales, nothing converts. And sales and marketing have this fight where marketing is saying, well, we're generating loads of leads and sales are like saying, but none of them are any good and they don't suit our business. And it's that, you know, so sales will call somebody and say, oh, I believe you're interested in buying my networking product. And they'll say, well, I, I downloaded an idiot's guide, but I'm studying in university for networking. You see that. So 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 in order to in order to re reach this cost per lead goal, you know, you kind of dumb down, your, down the content, down, down, you dumb down your content. Sorry. So personally, you know, me and a number of the team, because I've got, you know, a magnificent team, you know, we've been obsessing over this issue uh, and we've tried lots of different things. And with this question of how do we keep the cost per lead low, but not damage the lead quality? And then something really bad happened in the world. There was this horrible virus uh, that went around. And what happened was that pushed a load more money into the digital space. So when you imagine there's a huge influx of money coming in to places like LinkedIn, for example, and by the way, at the same time that this is happening, people like Apple and Google are removing the use of third party cookies. So all of a sudden, these first party data providers like Facebook and Meta and LinkedIn and, and Twitter with, with, with some regard, although their targeting is not necessarily great, you know, they became you know, this um, um, bidding engine for clicks. But of course, there's only so many people using the platform. More money comes in, everything gets more expensive. And if you combine that with the buyer getting younger, they're much more digitally savvy, their time is more precious, and they know, they just know, if I fill in that form, you get my data. That's the problem. So it's almost created this, this perfect storm of how do we give you some value in return for your information and your attention. Um, and this is a global problem. So we really obsessed about how can we meet that challenge, which is when we ask you for that, your details, your point of contact request, what's the value exchange? And that really was the birth of the idea of Clio. And that dates back two years ago now. I see. Yeah, that makes a whole lot of sense because as a consumer, we, we all know ads, we hate it but it's there, there's nothing we can do about it. And then come Web3, we talk about digital ownership, right? So it's like, I, I start to see the connecting, you know, the dots here. When I was going and looking around Clio, what actually stood out to me was the angle about like sustainability, uh, ESG, and of course uh, the term marketing for good. Can you kind of explain more about that and why it's important perhaps? Yeah, so we, we 
I, I, I'm not sure this to say this because it, 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 it doesn't sound very nice. So we, we started really simply two years ago by saying there's got to be an exchange of value. Well, what's the most obvious exchange of value? Well, well, it's kind of money, right? So initially we started or we did a pilot, which was rewarding somebody's attention, particularly in a sales meeting. Um, with money in in the form of a gift card, it sounds really dirty business, right? But it was it was a test for us uh, with one of our American SaaS clients, where essentially you came through the pipeline, you came on a webinar, and we said, look, if you just come for a sales meeting and hear us out, we'll give you a hundred dollar gift card. So we recognise it's your time. We'll give you a hundred dollars. Now, not surprisingly, the impact was was instant. It really was. So we cut the cost per lead in half. So we 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 made a we made a three hundred dollar saving with a hundred dollar gift card, and and it was a relatively simple instant win. Now, the problem the problem there is kind of what I alluded to is that giving somebody money, it kind of feels wrong, feels a bit like bribery, and it probably is right. So you know, um, um, a lot of our very corporate clients in, on both consumer and B two B wouldn't be interested in doing something like that but what it proved was where you met with something of value for your attention it worked the other challenge with gift cards is it's not really scalable right so we had to have somebody sit there check somebody attended manually verify their data buy the gift card with fear package the gift card up you know i think we tried physical and we tried digital physical was a lot better because digital they had to open the so we posted them out a little gift card with a thank you for attending and a little signed personal note so although it was a hundred dollar gift card it cost us about 150 dollars to get the gift card out if that makes sense which is not scalable because we could do it locally in the us you know but we've got clients across asia and across europe so what currency in this gift card is what is the gift card for right so even if you think it's a good idea to give gift cards, it's absolutely not scalable as well. So very long way to answer your question. But, you know, uh, at the same time this was happening, we all as an agency were getting very, very focused on um, our ESG goals and our impact and kind of what impact marketing has. So we'd already made our agency net zero, carbon net zero. We'd started to talk about you know, what could we do that was better? What's what sustainable web hosting look like? All that kind of stuff. Um, and we've got, a you know, a couple of people in the agency that are real advocates for, you know, doing some good for the planet. So that kind of implanted in us this idea of, well, what if we took that gift card and instead of gave you it as money, we actually did something good out in the world. So you still get the benefit, but you don't get the money. You get that feeling that, actually something good has happened on my, my my behalf like you know like a donation has been made to your favorite opera house for example right but this is the you know the one single cause that impacts every child every person every child and every unborn child on the planet um and i tell you what marketing is i mean we we have a big negative impact on the planet i mean if you if you just take digital ads globally what in one year they generate nearly eighty thousand tons of CO two. That's just serving ads, right? So that's the equivalent of flying over a million and a half passengers between London and Paris. It'd take we would we did the maths. It would take three and a half full for three and a half million fully grown trees to absorb that amount of carbon in a year. Now the other side to this is because people are spending money on ads and nobody clicks. And they're building websites that people don't visit. It's estimated that, that around fifteen percent of spend is completely wasted too. So there's yeah, so there's a huge amount of negative impact on the environment through serving things digitally, and there's a lot of wastage. Now, that's not going to go away, right? Facebook's not going to turn around and say, "Oh, we give up because we're harming the planet," right? So we've just got to find a way to create more balance. So we're not we don't want people to feel guilty about marketing. But what we want to do is give people an opportunity to be able to measure what they're doing, reduce their impact and offset stuff to create, you know, a greater balance, you know, within a campaign. And at its heart, really, that's what that's what Clio is. It's a platform that's going to reward somebody for their attention for good and help brands bring greater balance 
uh, uh, to their marketing campaigns. So we, we feel really good. And you, hopefully you can tell we're pretty passionate about it. And I'm so passionate about it that, well, you know, I've mentioned that we've got a great team at the agency. So um, I've actually relinquished now control of the agency. Uh, we've distributed shares out to our uh, teams. So over the next few years, we're going to transition to being a staff owned agency. So I can focus on really helping take Clio to a global market. So I will be obviously utilizing the agency and the agency's customers for the good of Clio to be able to help us extend, extend the proposition, but it doesn't require my day-to-day -day oversight, um, um, which I think is, you know, it, it puts us in a really good position for us to be able to take Clio beyond just the customers that we know on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, out through a much broader network. Got it. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. It's, yeah, I think it's important to understand the context. And uh, some comments I want to share is there's actually a parallel in the crypto industry. So back in the bull run, right, um, people were giving out tokens, you know, so hence monetary value in exchange for like AMAs, you know, asking questions or just doing simple tasks. The problem with that is people come in again, just for the money. They don't really care about the project per se too much. And now we started shifting yeah. to, hey, NFTs, something there's, where there's a lot more uh, emotional attachment. So I kind of see the parallel with what you were saying there in the industry. Hmm. Yeah. And, and I think in the background, it just it really does help us build a community of people that want to do good as well. So I think it's, you know, it really is a topic that connects people. And I think coming out of, you know, all of the um, um, issues we've had in the last few years, looking to a brighter future and how we collectively as a planet can make a brighter future. I think that's a nice place to be after all of the fear and issues that we've had you know, that everybody globally has gone through in the last few years. Yeah, absolutely. So now from a tech perspective, like how exactly is in blockchain or Web3 technology um, being used within Clio? Yeah, it's a great question. So like I said before, a big part of our problem is scaling, right? Um, but if we kind of start from the, the, the ESG space, that there's a lot of greenwashing. Um, and when we start on this journey of looking at partners and looking at space and looking at what we could do, there are projects that use a variety of different methods and the pricing of different activities incredibly varied. Um, so we want this and Clio will be the most transparent platform, not just in the blockchain space, but also in the, in, in the ESG space. And the blockchain will enable us to provide an end to end record of where every dollar has gone, essentially from the vendor who or the brand that's running the campaign through the user to the projects. Um, the other thing as well is that um, we, we really need to have a um, global program, right? So yes, there will be some country campaigns, there will be some regional campaigns, but we need a, um, a global currency that can run in a system that isn't tied to a single fiat. So the blockchain again enables us to do that. So, you know, it empowers these two things, full transparency of transactions and the ability to have an uh, in-app currency that can be utilized in every country. So the, the other benefit that the blockchain has allowed us to do um, is to create a completion certificate uh, in the form of a really nicely designed NFT. So when somebody's looking for proof of execution, what they actually get is a really nicely designed, and we're actually working with some digital artists to do some limited editions and things like that. And brands actually are going to are creating their own with their own logo. So if somebody's part of a campaign and they get a hundred trees planted or they get a ton of carbon removed from the atmosphere, they don't just get the knowledge that something happened. They actually get the proof. And that is an on-chain digital certificate in the form of an NFT that sits in their account. So that's obviously digitally in their wallet, but they can print it off and hang it on their wall. They can post it to their Instagram or their LinkedIn, you know, if they want to show people what they're doing. And ultimately, over the course of their transactions for content for good and for marketing for good, they're going to accumulate this counter. So we'll be having like one year anniversaries that summarize what, what, you know, what you've achieved in this year. And I think a lot of individuals are going to try and move towards this goal of, being being personally net zero, right? So depending on what country you're in, that target might be different. So where I am now in the UK, the average for somebody in the UK is about eight tonnes uh, of carbon per year. US, it's higher. 
Asia, it's lower. So, you know, we, we want to give people the ability to be able to not only help, but also to be able to share their helping and tell their story yeah. and tell why they think it's important. Yeah, yeah. And I really like that because before NFTs, like, let's say you get a certificate or you get a trophy because you did this and that. There's ways to just physically place it on your shelf, right? And show off. But now with NFTs, you can do that digitally. So it's also mm. like a, like your uh, reputation. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I interesting, I had a meeting uh, this week uh, with a very large global telesales agency. And loads of customers globally, loads of agents, you know, hundreds of agents in each of the regions generating appointments and things for, for all sorts of different brands. And um, they trialed a program, which was a tree for a meeting. Um, um, so it was like a tender meeting. We planned a tree, but they found actually getting the proof of that tree being planted was a nightmare because they were asking literally for photographs of the tree being planted. And it, it's, it's taking them three months. And, and they said to me, yeah, yeah, no, it's taking three months to get a picture of somebody planting a tree. Right. And, um, so I said to them, like, do you know how much that would cost you through Clio? And he said, what? I said, 65 cents to plant a tree. And he was like, but that's incredible. Well, how do you prove it's planted? And I said, because it's, there's end-to-end -end transparency. We have an amazing partner that plants a tree at one end. We have your money at one end. And in the middle, the user gets a digital immediate certificate saying this has happened. What I then went on to explain to him, to be frank, is that I don't think 65 cents uh, to attend a sales meeting is a fair reward. So he should look at planting maybe 20 trees or 100 trees or you know, 50 trees and 500 plastic bottles from the ocean or something like that. So, you know, there's always an opportunity to sell somebody up. But he was amazed that it was so efficiently cheap, you know, and instantly recordable. And back to your back to your previous question, we couldn't do that without the blockchain. We'd be doing what he's been doing for the last three years, which is literally having a partner that he sends money to that goes and plants a tree and takes a picture and kind of sends him it back. And it's a little bit like you know, trust me, bro. Did you plant a tree? Oh yeah, of course we did. Here's a photo. You know what I mean? So it's, uh, you know, and, and for me, it was, it was when that moment twigged and it was like, actually, this is the project, the blockchain helps this, you know? And I think that, that was an important thing for me because I've been, you know, part of supporting marketing projects that have gone on and done really well, supporting marketing projects, as you know, a lot of ICOs do fail, but the idea is really good. It's just, you know, the, 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 the application. And a lot of those projects start with, we want to do something in blockchain, what can we do? Which I think is actually quite similar to a lot of NFT projects. We want to do an NFT, what can we attach it to? And I think our approach here has been completely different. We're, we're very focused on what is, you know, we're saving, we're trying to solve this global problem that everybody has. And actually we found then that the blockchain was the answer rather than, the blockchain was the question, right? You know, so so it's a it was a nice way to find it, and it's a it's a great a great uh, place to start for us. Got it. Okay, okay. So then, let's say um, I represent an organization planting trees, right? And I want to initiate people to actually plant them. And I hear about Clio. I'm like, Jason, let's work together. Can you kind of tell me like the journey and how it actually works and where Clio comes in? Yeah. So we so initially we've. Um, pre-selected three projects. So we've done a lot of researches, a lot of research with our initial partner um, called Earth9. And we've identified three projects that we want to support, okay? Um, and if I just give you a very brief summary, uh, we've got some great content that explains it, but you know, our, our three projects that we're supporting initially um, uh, for tree planting, our partner's called Eden Reforestation. 50% uh, of the trees go in areas around the world, like Haiti, Honduras, Indonesia, places like that. Um, and 50% goes into Nepal, which has been one of the least developed countries in the world. And, and locally, they require the trees and the forests for food, shelter, and also income. So, so Eden Reforestation, they're absolutely amazing. And we're, you know, we're targeting planting at least a million trees with them this year. Um, the other project that we're quite passionate about is taking plastic out of the ocean. So we found a partner uh, in Thailand uh, called Second Life. Um, there are, you know, over 12 million tons of plastic enters our ocean every year. And what Second Life does is they don't just take the plastic out of the oceans, um, but they uh, recycle them into something good. 
Uh, interestingly, I had a meeting with a, a very large football team in the UK um, who are using recycled plastic from Thailand to make their football kits for next year. So no their way. shirts are made out wow. of recycled plastic. Yeah, yeah. And it's so nice to see how these projects yeah, kind of yeah, come yeah. together. So so planting trees, taking plastic out of the ocean. And um, the third one was, was um, more generic around carbon removal. So we looked at all the projects that did it, and there was one project that meets all of the UN's sustainability goals. Uh, and that's called the Rimba Raya Biodiversity Deserve, uh, Biodiversity, Rimba Raya Biodiversity uh, Reserve, and they're based in Borneo. Um, and they do some absolutely amazing things. So that's our kind of start point, okay? Now, those we've negotiated, we're bulk buying. In every case, we've pre-bought, if that makes sense. So when we do a campaign live, we're not then paying them later, we've pre-bought. Um, we've offset our first million transactions through Clio, so we're actually a net zero uh, project too. So we have for want of a better word, inventory in each of those three areas uh, for our client campaigns to come into. Now, what's really important going forward is that um, I am not an expert in this space, right? I'm passionate, but I know my expertise is marketing and hopefully uh, Web3. So that's, that's, where, that's where I come from. Um, so we are we are um, um, creating. We're we've already started recruiting uh, an SDG board. So if somebody was to come to us tomorrow and say we'd love to be a supplier to your platform, i.e., we have a project, we do some good, we have a completely independent non-exec board um, that will that are already in that world, and their job is to review applications effectively for suppliers. Um, we're not a marketplace for carbon credits. That's not what we're creating. We want to work with very specifically handpicked projects that we can verify good is being done and they meet our criteria. Um, the other thing, just why I mentioned the SDG board, is that 5% um, of our company revenues is going into an impact investment fund that interestingly is, is being set up as a DAO, so it's owned by the token holders. And a part, part of the role for the SDG board is to bring investment opportunities, so uh, angel investment opportunities, to the community to vote which ones we should invest in to support. Because we recognize that planting a tree today is going to help. We recognize that protecting um, rainforest to absorb carbon is important for today's solution. But the most important things are going to be the technologies that are going to come to market in five years time and 10 years time. You know, so so we're we're already, you know, we're already working with uh, three partners. We've privately invested in some of these because they're quite exciting, which are, you know, how to turn water into energy, which is blows my mind how you do that, how you do vertical farming without water, which just I, I, honestly, I can't wrap my brain around how it's possible to grow food without the use of water. But there's, there's some amazing things. So um, I hope I'm answering your question. So if somebody wants to come and, and be a supplier, we have a process for that. It isn't me. It isn't the commercial aspect. We have a non-exec uh, specialist board that review projects. But the exciting bit for me is us finding projects to invest in. And then when they go live, we bring those into the platform. And I think what blockchain also offers us then is the ability to have a community involved in that you know, a community coming in to help choose, to help research, and importantly, to own a share should those companies go on and be incredibly successful with their technology in the future. Yeah. Uh, back to kind of like the, um, you know, analogy where like people, you know, want to start an NFT project and they're like, okay, what do we do with it? It's the same thing. It's like people want to start a DAO nowadays, but for what, right? What reason? In your case, there's a very clear yeah. Yeah, reason. Okay. People come in who are passionate, right? With uh, trees or you know ocean plastic and they come together to make a decision so i i really do see you know good uh cause why you guys need a doubt in this case and instead of just saying we're gonna do an nft sale and do an impact investing fund and go spend it you know which is obviously you're raising some money at the beginning and then you're at the whim of open seas trading fees or whatever right to be able to generate more money we really wanted to tie the dow you know, to the company as the company grows. So, you know, as Clio grows, like I said, it's not 5% of our profits, it's 5% of our revenue, which actually represents a very big portion of our profits, but that's our way of kind of giving back. 
obviously to, to, to be able to support new projects, but also to, you know, our community that will be supporting, you know, us on this journey too. Got it. Okay. So then can you then summarize, let's say again, I'm a, I'm a brand or organization and then I want to use Clio and I, let's just say I'm not like web three tech savvy or anything. What are the core advantages of coming to you guys versus using some other existing like marketing platform? Yeah, no, it's a great question. So, and I think it might help if I give you, you know, a, a real world example, right? Because what I would say to somebody today, and actually a lot of my days are filled with talking to brands about what Clio can do for them, right? So uh, a lot of my time today is about, so, so in essence, what we say is that you get improved engagement at a lower cost per lead, okay? Um, there's a for good reward that you can embed in your campaign that is actually self-funded by the reduction in the cost per lead. And you get an improved lead quality because the Clio system qualifies the lead and actually asks them sales qualifying questions in the execution of the good. So we clean the data, we get it cheaper, we append the data and we actually clean the data and we look for intent you know, within them. Now, you might think, well, how does that work? So it's probably best if I just give you just one simple example from our pilot, right? So. And, and give you some real world numbers. Now, this is in, you know, one very small application of the market. So let's look at something that's been incredibly popular in the last two years, and that's online webinars. You cannot move without seeing an invite for a webinar. Come on a webinar and learn about my thing, right? So, you know, uh, and it's, it's, it's been a great tactic that, that we've used. But the problem has been the increase. So if we take one client, um, uh, a B2B technology client okay so the cost per click has increased because of um, uh, increased time and more and more people um, um, uh, putting ads online right so you know cost per click on average went from around four dollars to four dollars fifty to around ten dollars at one point at its peak it was actually nearly twenty dollars to get a click right so if you compound um, uh, an increased cost per click and a lower on-page conversion, sign up, was lower. What we also found is that less people turned up. So three years ago, we'd be getting, three and a half years ago, we'd be getting around 33%. Around a third of people would actually turn up to a webinar they're registered for. Today, you get around 20%. So it's like one in five. So when you add those maths up, mm -hmm. it costs somewhere between 1000 to $1,200 oh to get somebody to attend a webinar, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, but but they're a good quality lead because they're giving you your time. Now, in this instance, our for good offer is to carbon offset your entire computer for a whole year. So you give this is my this is my offer to you. You give me 20 minutes of your time to learn about my solution, which should benefit you, and I'll carbon offset your entire computer usage, computer you use for work for a whole year. That's about a ton of carbon. So our testing shows this that we can reduce the cost per attendee by around $600. We can half it. Now, the good cost is $50. So in that example, you get an improved cost per lead and you reduce your cost per lead by $550. You get a better quality lead. And along the way, the planet gets a little bit of help. And we're not the agency. We're not the campaign. We're the technology platform that allows that to happen. So they can run their own campaign. They keep doing what they're doing, attend my webinar, but they just have this really nice little offer. Just like if you're in the consumer market, you know, you might see a, you know, try this for six months. And if you don't like it, send it back or a hundred pound, you know, hundred dollar cash back at back to school for Christmas, for example. It's the same thing. It enables them to attach a simple offer, which improves all of those metrics by small percentages. But when you add all of those things up and you compound it, you get a dramatically lower you know, um, cost per click. So it really is, a, I think, a simple proposition. We recognize your time is worth something. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do some good in the world on your behalf. So in essence, your attention for good. And that's why we, you know, we, we really call this marketing for good. It's doing all the same things, but mm -hmm. we're just creating a little bit more balance in the space. Ah, oh, okay, okay. Now I see where those terms came from. Got it. Yeah, look, uh, hey, if it can save me money, you know, let's talk more, right? <laughs> yeah, and, 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 you know, I'm, I believe that genuinely we're selling savings. 
So it's it's free money because we're saying, look, we'll we'll generate this and reduce your cost. So in essence, it's, it is free money. Um, and it's there's nothing easier to sell than a saving. Right. You know, and it's that's been around for years, like buy my thing and we reduce your electricity costs for the next three, three years. Right. I'm I'm getting solar, you know, putting on my house with a battery at the moment. Um, and I'm spending money, but I'm doing that to save myself some money. So I, I've, I've done the calculations and I've got about a three year payback. Right. So this fits in exactly the same space. But the, the returns are absolutely immediate because they are in, you know, in a campaign. So for the same money you're spending in marketing to generate a pipeline, you will not have to spend more money to embed a Clio offer and we'll give you a better quality lead and an improved pipeline that will convert with sales. And we'll, and we'll stand back stand by that. And, and along the way, the planet gets a nice helping hand, which makes us all feel good. The brand feels good because they can use it towards their ESG goals. The people involved in the campaign feel good because they get a nice little NFT that they can show. Look, this is this is what I've done. You know, companies of those can create a company account and, and show all their employees so they can they can uh, see what good's being done in the world. And, and we just sit in the middle as this little technology layer, you know, connecting brands to these projects and providing the proof in between, you know, very, very efficiently. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're very excited about it. Yeah. Great, great. Brilliant. And when it comes to, you know, the, the proving, right, the transparency layer, uh, we have to talk about the blockchain, of course. For reference, the uh, Starbucks, they built their NFT loyalty program on Polygon. So for you guys, mm. you know, Clio also chose Polygon. Can you kind of explain uh, why? Yeah, and we looked, we've looked at a lot of different networks, right? From do we build our own? Do we fork somebody's and do it? But what was really important for us was to be um, scalable and interoperable. So we wanted something that was, you know, very fast, that had relatively low transaction fees because we're talking about high volume turnover. Um, so that kind of ruled out, you know, Ethereum. Um, but we're really attracted to Polygon as a, as a layer two. And our testing shows that, you know, um, Polygon has a great uh, engine for producing NFTs. They're also Ethereum compatible too. So, so in terms of being able to connect and show, that was quite important too. So, you know, based on our requirements, based on our research, we, we felt that Polygon was the ideal blockchain for us to build on as opposed to us building our own chain to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Building your own is like just a whole nother monster. So I don't think that's where you guys want to necessarily go at this point. And I don't, I think if yeah. we were 2017, we probably would have looked at that. Yeah. But I think today there's just so much choice. You know, you're almost spoiled for choice as to where to go. And I'm sure people watching this that have got some bias against something else because they own a lot of tokens will be like, oh, hang on, this would be a lot better or you should have done it on Flow or you should have done it on Atom or something, right? But but we know we had a load of criteria um, and, and we just felt that Polygon, you know, Polygon kind of met that. Um, uh, uh, history will either prove us right or wrong. But I think the nice thing is that, you know, all of these things are, you know, it, it's not complicated to make a change on that piece of the technology because the users, the brands, they, they don't really care what blockchain run, right? We don't we don't talk about NFTs. We don't talk about blockchain. We're not selling a blockchain project. So, you know, it's really the blockchain is just the technology that enables it in the background. So now let's talk about what's coming next for Clio specifically. Um, perhaps like what are some uh, projects or campaigns that we can look forward to? So I don't want to give away too much now because we go live mid-March. Uh, but what I can confirm is that our first live campaign will be with uh, Lenovo, uh, the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. So that's our first campaign. Um, um, uh, we do have around 10 other large uh, blue chip clients and brands that you, you would have heard of uh, that are planning to start campaigns in Q2. Um, we also, in parallel to that, have an agency recruitment program. Uh, so we are actively talking to around 200 marketing agencies to bring Clio to their clients. So these are people that already have campaigns in market and are looking for an additional offer to give them an edge. So, so we have our um, direct brand um, opportunities, but we also have our agency program too. Um, we're also in Q2 launching a schools program called Planet Together. So this is slightly different. 
but what Planet Together will do, and we've, we've partnered with uh, Earth9 on this. So the program's called Planet Together, and essentially it's about helping schools go net zero through getting their students to create things that they turn into NFTs within the Clio platform, and essentially oh, really? their parents wow. come in to buy the NFT. So, so it's, mm. it's exactly the same. It's a for good program. But in this case, it's actually the schools creating the NFTs. It's like a modern day bake sale. Um, so, you know, yeah. the, you know, the kids make the NFTs, they, they put them into Clio. The school has a, a page in Clio. The parents come in and they find their kids drawing in there and they, and they have their stuff. So instead of sticking it on their fridge, they actually have it in their digital wallet. Right. So, yeah. you know, um, um, we've got, uh, five schools starting in Q2. We've got another 50 in the pipeline. And I mean, that's so scalable. I mean, if you take the UK alone, there's nearly 40,000 schools in the UK and all of them, all of them are trying to go net zero because, you know, there's one thing I know about um, uh, kids is that they're, they're all activists. I mean, they want to do good in the world. And, you know, these schools are a big building. They're a big producer of carbon. So, you know, this, this seems to have resonated really well. So, Although you've perhaps heard me talk a lot about B2B marketing and these B2B clients, that really is where the volume is going to come from, right? Because that's where we're doing, you know, and the rewards go from as little as 65 cents up to about $850, which is, which is carbon offset for life. Um, so one of our clients, a rather big one, we're, we're doing a tree planting campaign where anybody that downloads an asset has a tree planted. But in the quarter, one person will win being carbon offset for life. So we, we're mixing very small rewards with a chance to win a very big reward. And this carbon offset for life is actually a generational thing. It, 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 the actual carbon offsetting will happen for 380 years on average. So actually it's something they could pass down um, um, and pass through the family. Um, and they, we provide full evidence as to how that works and their NFT evolves over, evolves over time and stuff like that. So, so yeah. So yeah, so so um, we're incredibly excited about our pipeline. Like I said, we've been talking about this, you know, uh, building clients up to this for really the last two years, and they've kind of been waiting for us to turn it on. So for sure, live mid March, first campaign is Lenovo, you know, and I guess we're not announcing an announcement, so we will be confirming campaigns as they go live, rather than hinting at you know particular brands or talking about discussions. Right. So again, we. I mentioned transparency earlier, so we want to be completely transparent about the operations and what we're doing. Brilliant, brilliant. And uh, I actually um, have a follow-up question when we're talking about these schools, right? So the kids create the uh, artwork, um, NFTs, and then their parents buy that. And then can you explain, okay, then how does that exactly make the school carbon offset or neutral? Yeah, no, it's a great question. So, um, so we've worked with uh, um, the ISO certification to assess the schools on what their carbon impact is. Um, uh, it's quite a complicated process, but with our five pilot schools, we've built a model that makes it like a tool that makes it a lot easier. So the school literally says, here's my electricity bill and here's our things, right? So, so initially they, they, they feed their numbers in and it tells us what their carbon number is. So this is your carbon in the year. Then it's relatively simple. Divide that cost by the number of pupils to give them a target raise per pupil. So the front end is slightly different in a sense of their pro the school is providing the NFTs that comes into Clio to be sold. At that point of transaction, everything is then the same as it works uh, with our B2B program. So, you know, the, the same suppliers are connected on chain. So, so in essence, the, the money comes in. in. In this case, the money will be coming in from parents, grandparents, stuff like that. They'll be paying with their debit card, their visa. They'll, so they'll literally just come to Clio and, and do at that point. It gets turned into the token and the good gets executed. So again, they have a blockchain wallet. They don't need to think of it as a blockchain wallet. It's, a, it's an account in Clio, but that gives them this address that shows the good being done. And the NFT then becomes that completion certificate. So it will so if you imagine all of those funds then effectively create a carbon certificate for the school so ultimately now the school might not raise enough to be 100 percent net zero but they'll definitely raise something um it's interestingly not as much per pupil as you'd imagine for a school so it's only around eight 
dollars per student per year that they need to raise. So it isn't a huge oh, amount wow. of money, right? You know, it's not a huge amount of money. So, so that's like the, one meal, you know, in yeah, the US. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not a lot, yeah. right? So, so you get the school, the, sorry, the parent gets the NFT, which essentially is the completion certificate for what that single NFT does. But then the school gets the Vera certified um, um, completion certificate uh, at the end of that campaign that then can count towards their their ESG goals. And actually, I do just want to add, and we, we don't know how serious this is going to get over the course of the next five years, but there will be hard and fast goals placed on organizations. There will be targets. There will be, you've got to meet, there's a lot of talk about a carbon tax in Europe and stuff like this. A personal issue, you know, as an individual, you've got to show and you've got to mitigate your carbon. So uh, the beauty of blockchain is that everything we're doing is transparent. Everything is certified, everything based around the UN sustainability goals. So it's our belief that our Clio proposition will enable people to prove that they are meeting their sustainability goals at the moment meeting their goals is just something they can say to the world. We're net zero, right? But very soon that's going to change to we have to meet our goals or we will be taxed for not meeting them. And I do believe that will impact businesses. It will impact schools. And I also think it'll impact private individuals. And with that aim, we've also opened Clio up to allow private individuals to do some good if they actually want to spend their own money. So a lot of what we've talked about is the real application in the marketing sense. But actually, if a user, so say you go on a campaign with a client, um, it's Lenovo or, or something like that, and you go, oh, this is interesting. I've just got 50 Clio tokens for attending this webinar. I'd like to carve off my set, offset myself for a year, but there's a shortfall in being able to do that. I can top that up myself with my Visa card, or I could buy it as a gift for somebody, right? So... So there is this consumer application where it isn't just a reward for good. Actually, you can just do the good directly. You don't have to give your time. So that's not our key value proposition. There are other people that do that. So that isn't unique. But if we do have you captured as an audience and we have this transparency and you feel comfortable with the projects we're supporting, we actually think people might just want to spend some money themselves to do some good as well as spend their time to do some good. Um, so that is a, that's an important part of our growth, although it's not part of our strategic um, uh, marketing, if that makes sense. So if people want to learn more about Clio, um, I'm sure you guys have a website, but where do you suggest is like the best place just to start? I mean, uh, our website, which is just clio.tech, has the links to all of our social accounts. Um, you can obviously follow us on Twitter, I'd encourage you to come join our Discord and actually get involved in the conversation and ask questions and talk to us. Um, we will be doing regular uh, AMAs and updates and things like that. We want to be incredibly transparent with the community. So so I would love people to get involved. We'd love people to come in and ask us questions. Like I said, the best place to do that is Discord. But if you start at our website, which is just uh, clio.tech, uh, you, uh, you can kind of root then into whatever the, the channel of your choice is. I'm looking forward to the progress. Um, do tweet right often and keep the community updated. So uh, thank you very much, Jason. Um, very thoughtful and eye-opening you know, interview. And I uh, hope to see you next time. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Have a good one, Jason.